It's time for Washington Fish Side Quest. This episode, Washington Fishing Rigs. What's changed in 70 years? I won, on a popular internet bidding site, this 1951 Game Fish Regulation pamphlet for Washington State. I thought it'd be a larf to compare it against the modern day regulations. Regulations that are more restrictive will be the third chapter. And then to end on a high note, there actually are some regulations that are less restrictive. All right, now let's talk about what's gotten more restrictive for your friendly neighborhood recreational angler. And again, this is gonna to be top five. So number five, oysters. I love them, who doesn't? Everybody loves a nice oyster, slipper down a nice oyster. So back in 1951, you could harvest 36 oysters. Today, you can harvest 18. So, and I'm assuming that 1951, actually I know in 1951, you could just pick the shells up off the beach, whereas, uh, you know, now you need to shuck them so that oysters can regenerate in those shuck shells on the beach. Uh, so that's a change. Uh, half the oysters used to be able to, to harvest back then. Number four. So to stick in the theme of general shellfish, it's interesting. Most things in this pamphlet are twice of what they are today. So, for instance, you could harvest 20 pounds of mussels. Oh, actually an aggregate. 20 pounds of mussels, clams, and cockles, not including the razor clams that I mentioned. Uh, and then with crabs, you could harvest up to 12 crabs, uh, Dungeness crab, which on the coast you can harvest six, so that's half, and in Puget Sound you can harvest five. So it's kind of interesting how looking at this, you can see how this uh, sort of came to be, how a lot of things are, you know, this is half of this. Number three, and this is a general one. You know, I combed through this pamphlet, and there's a lot to it. One of the things I should have added in the same category is the pamphlet is still incredibly difficult to uh, decipher information from. Now to give WDFW props, I do like the format change in this pamphlet that made it kind of more, um, I don't know, columns-like, more rows, I guess you would say. This is rows, not columns, yeah. So there's more rows in here. This makes it easier on the eyes, at least. But there's still a very confusing language, even in the 1951 pamphlet. So for number three, limits are less restrictive in general. Um, and by that, I mean, hem, let me read the general clause. And I'll, you can see if you can make heads or tails out of it. I, I can a little, but I still think I need to lawyer up to really get, get to the bottom of it. It says, daily catch and possession limits, regular summer season. Not to exceed 10 pounds and one game fish, uh, providing the number of fish so taken do not exceed 20 pounds in number, provided that the above catch limit shall not contain more than two steelhead over the daily length of 20 inches. Uh, so, you know, that's actually sounded kind of restrictive, but when I look at the more restrictive limits and in the individual bodies of water, I can tell that it's not, if that makes sense. So, just in general, fishing was more open here. Number two. All right, so this didn't exist in the 1951 pamphlet because it hadn't really occurred yet, and that's the clipping of the adipose fin. So, uh, my number two is adipose fin hatchery versus wild. So, you know, in the current regulations, you know, when fishing is open for salmon in multiple areas, often you can only catch a hatchery fish, especially if we're talking about uh, Chinook salmon or coho salmon. That wasn't an issue in 1951. You could, you know, keep uh, any salmon, and they all had their fins because the program hadn't uh, started yet. Honorable mention. So Fish and Wildlife doesn't always say you can't fish for something, but for health reasons, you probably shouldn't eat it. So in 1951, there was nothing in here about persistent bioaccumulative toxics. Unfortunately, we've put quite a bit of them into our environment over the last 70 years. So now there's always this nifty little section you know, the advisories to uh, not eat fish that have been contaminated. Uh, so that's a bummer. However, that's just an honorable mention because Fish and Wildlife actually uh, has nothing that says you can't eat them. It would just be very um, unwise to do so. Number one, the salmon limits. So I've heard from fishermen from the 50s and 60s that it used to be six salmon, an angler a day. And I checked this guide, although this is the, the game fish guide and salmon is qualified as a food fish, there still is a little blurb in the back. Uh, and that's right, it is six a day, uh, but there is some qualifiers in there. Now, I'm not going to get into anything specific with uh, the modern day rigs because, as you know, it's extremely complicated. But in most areas, salmon fishing is either closed or you can keep one salmon or two salmon. Sometimes you can keep three or four. For instance, uh, Hood Canal, you know, usually you can keep four chum most seasons. Uh, Baker Lake, if it's open, you can keep three or four sockeye uh, many seasons, things of that nature. 
Um, and sometimes they do have that. Like, you know, for instance, I fish the Puyallup River. A lot of the time you can keep uh, a couple of adults and a couple of jacks or something like that. So, but usually it's zero to two. Uh, sometimes four, but, you know, usually less. It is true, in, uh, back in 1951, you could keep six salmon. However, it's not as uh, glorious as I thought it might be. There are, like I say, a qualifier. Him. Personal use shall not exceed the following. Six salmon over a length of 12 inches, but not more than three of which shall be of a length greater than 24 inches. So essentially what we're looking at is, uh, at least with uh, kings and uh, chums, is three adults and three jacks. Uh, so, you know, that's still, that's, I'd take that any day, that'd be, that'd be great. But, uh, frankly, those numbers aren't in our rivers anymore. Uh, and uh, that's what it actually was. So basically three adults, three jacks, but yes, in general, the limit was six. And uh, today, in general, the limit is somewhere between generally zero and two. All right, so now that I've gotten everybody real mad, I will talk about things that become less restrictive. Honestly, these uh, aren't as big as the things that become more restrictive, but we're going to end on a high note, by golly. So number five, uh, and I'm going to actually roll two gear rules that become less strict in together. So in 1951, you could only use two hooks per rod. In 2020 and 2021, 70 years later, you can use three. So you picked up an extra hook per rod. And speaking of rods, now we got a two-pole endorsement. Back in 1950, and you have to pay for it, but back in 1951, there was no such option. It was, it's uh, Washington, unlike a lot of other states, has always been kind of a one-rod state. So in the in most, the vast majority of bodies of water, and there were a couple of exceptions for some reason, but generally you could only use one rod, whereas today you can basically buy a rod for most lakes and some parts of uh, marine waters. For instance, South 12, Marine Area 12 Hood Canal, and Area 13, you can use two rods. Number four. So sticking with the gear theme, uh, back then in 1951, you could not use an artificial light. Artificial lights were prohibited on all waters. Uh, however, today, artificial lights are fine. Feel free to use them all you want. Number three, I've got some good news for you, friends. If you like collecting them mud bugs, them crayfish, them crawdaddies, I call them crawdads, by the way, because I'm from the deep, dark woods of Lewis County originally, uh, is that it has become less restrictive in the last 70 years. So in the pamphlet from 1951, it would, the limit was a hard 36. And they may have been way bigger back then, so who knows, maybe you got more meat content. But today, uh, just taking the average weight of a signal crawfish, you're going to be in more in the range of 50 crawfish. I mean, that can go up and down. It's a range because the limit is 10 pounds, but uh, that, that's about 50. So you could get about, uh, you know, a little over a dozen more, you know, if you're average size crawfish. So that's great. Number two. This is kind of weird, you know, and I often complain about the possession limit only being a two-day possession limit because I like to go up and camp on the strait. And uh, there's ways to kind of get around it with freezing your fish or smoking it in the field. But uh, if you're just keeping your fish in a cooler, you know, in a non-processed fashion, the daily limit right now in 2020, 2021, is two possession limits. Well, if you think you're going to get around that by building a time machine and going back to 1951, I've got some hard news for you. Uh, it was only one possession limit back then. As I said earlier in the video, uh, these regs seem to be extremely county-based. And like I said, there's even a, a license for if you don't fish outside of your county. So uh, back then, the one possession limit was your daily limit. So if a game worm rolled up onto you and you had a limit in the cooler and a limit on the stringer, that's, uh, that's over limit. Honorable mention. So uh, I haven't done a video on this, don't know if I ever will, but I do bullfrog gig from time to time. Not very often, but I do. Uh, like I say, I'm from Loose County. <laughs> and bullfrogs do taste good. They, they taste like chicken. And in case you think I'm a monster, bullfrogs are an invasive species that will eat anything that can fit into their mouths, including our endangered, or threatened at least, I should say threatened, uh, tree frog species and salamanders. They'll eat anything that fits in their mouth. So, you know, if you have a hankering for frog legs, uh, please feel free to eat all them bullfrogs with no guilt because you will be saving native species if you do. Uh, and fish as well. I mean, bullfrog will eat anything they can get a hold of. So uh, back then, though, in 1951, they may not have been aware of that yet because uh, the limit was 10. They did not want you to take all, all the bullfrogs, and good luck with that because they're so dang prolific. Fish and Wildlife now says, hey, those, that's an invasive species. Take as many as you want, uh, which, uh, which I like. Number one. So this is kind of a weird one, and it's nothing that, uh, you know, was probably planned in most cases. In some rare runs it was, but often it was just bucket biology and people illegally planning things. 
But back in 1951, we didn't have the diversities of species in the state for the recreational angler to target. So, for instance, uh, if you like, uh, you know, more channel catfish, shad, uh, walleye is not mentioned in this pamphlet because they just, you know, there might have been a couple in the state, but there weren't many. Uh, then today, you know, you got way more opportunities as far as the recreational goes, especially I think on the east side of the mountains. Uh, you know, to get out there and get them shad and them walleye and uh, whatever else uh, that's been introduced. You know, and there's there's good and bad with that. Some species are a little more destructive than others, that's for certain. Uh, tiger muskie is another one, I guess, that's been planted uh, strictly for the recreational angler to catch. You know, our bass fisheries have been enhanced. And there are, you know, uh, very heated policy discussions about that today. But as a recreational angler, I say that is a good thing. That uh, the number one thing is we have more diversities of species to catch, so we can have just a wonderful YouTube channel like Washington Fish Quest. In conclusion, a lot has changed in the last uh, 70 years. However, actually not as much as I thought. I really thought this 1951 pamphlet was going to be the wild, wild west. Although they were much more liberal, there still was uh, different limits and regulations and restrictions for for uh, both the state in general and individual bodies of water. Uh, you know, the science isn't where it was now, and that's at least partially uh, why management's gotten more complex. That said, and simply in many cases, the fish are no longer there, uh, at least in the quantities that they were. Uh, and if you don't like uh, the nature of things, you should uh, maybe think about either joining a local fishing chapter or a nonprofit of another kind or write your legislature or uh, write Fish and Wildlife. And heck, it might not change anything, but I, I can tell you, if you don't uh, say anything at all, then you really won't change anything. Uh, it's like I say to my, my friends and family, you can't complain if you don't vote. So uh, <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, get out there and enjoy our beautiful Washington waters. Uh, and I'll see you next time on Washington Fish Quest.